I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. I don't have any money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills that I have acquired over a very long YouTube career. If you let my son Lando go, I'll hang up now and that'll be the end of it. But if you don't, I will come after you. I will find you. And I will kill you. <clears throat> Excuse me, was just uh, doing a little bit of an audition for uh, Taken 4, where my son Lando is stolen from me when he goes off to cat college. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Home Media R Reviews. This re review is our big multi-film episode here. We are taking a look at the Taken Trilogy. I kind of already revealed my thoughts on this trilogy last week uh, when we talked about First Blood, but this is a trilogy that shouldn't exist and has no right to exist because the first Taken was fine just on its own. But we're going to get into that later on in the video right now. Let's move along to the history section of Taken. So in case you guys forgot the rules for these multi-film episodes of Home Media r Reviews, we are going to go through each of these movies one by one. We're going to talk about the theatrical release the first time that the movie was released on physical media and then any set that all three of these films were included in. So this is not a comprehensive breakdown of every two pack that had taken one and two included. It's just a breakdown of the releases of, of all three of the taken movies where they were bundled together. So to start off, original movie taken was theatrically re released on January 30th, 2009. I was alive for this. I was, I think, was nine years old when this came out in theaters, so I did not see it in theaters. No way my parents would have let me see this being nine, and I don't think that I would have wanted to see it either. I saw Taken years later. In fact, there's a video on my channel, one of my very first Black Friday haul videos where I went to Meyer and found the first Taken on DVD for $1.96. I thought that was a fantastic deal at that point in time. It still actually is a pretty good deal now. I mean, finding a DVD for less than two bucks, that's pretty, that's pretty great. And that's how I first saw Taken. I watched that DVD copy and thought it was pretty good. Fun fact though, this first film actually premiered in France first in February 2008, because technically this movie is a French film. Sort of. It's not like a French movie where it's all in the French language, but it does have a lot of French natives working on it, I including Luc Besson, who I think wrote this film. I know he wrote the next two, but I think he also wrote this one as well. So Taken then hit Blu-ray and DVD on May 12th, 2009. We have a couple of re releases to talk about here. We have a single disc DVD variant. We have a two disc DVD variant, and both of these include the extended cut of Taken. I think the two disc has the theatrical and the extended cut. The single version only has the extended cut, I think. I can't remember which one of these I owned back way back when I bought this on Black Friday. I think I own the single disc version and I'm pretty sure I saw the extended cut. I don't think there's much difference between the extended cut and the theatrical cut. It's probably just a few more violent shots. The Blu-ray though I think only has the extended cut. At least it says that in my notes here. Someone can correct me down in the comments if that's wrong. Three years later, on October 5th, 2012, Taken 2 hits theaters. I did not see this in theaters. I was 13 when this came out. Had no interest in Liam Neeson thrillers. So, I didn't see Taken 2 in theaters. Must have made a boatload of money at the box office to get a sequel out that quickly, though. And I know that they paid Liam Neeson an exuberant 
uh, amount of money to, to come back for both Taken 2 and 3. I'm pretty sure that's the only reason he did those sequels, because it wasn't for the script quality. January 15, 2013 brings us Taken 2 on Blu-ray and DVD. There is a quote-unquote extended slash unrated cut of Taken 2 that was included on both the Blu-ray and the DVD. Again, not much difference from the theatrical. We do have some exclusives to talk about here. We have a Best Buy exclusive pack with a t-shirt. Not a steelbook, a (laughs) t-shirt. Interesting. And then a Walmart exclusive with different artwork and no digital copy is included. The Blu-ray... I think this was only a Blu-ray exclusive because I don't think the DVD came with a digital copy. You're seeing it on your screen right now, so it doesn't say in my notes. I probably should have wrote that down. January 5th, 2015 brings us the theatrical release of Taken 3. I was 15 when this came out. I was just getting in to film as a whole. I had seen, you know, stuff like Iron Man and the Avengers by this point. I had actually seen Iron Man 3 in theaters in 2013, back when Taken 2 was first on the market. So I was into movies at this point, but I had no interest in seeing Taken 3. I, My parents saw Taken 3, though. They went and saw it in the movie theater, and they said, avoid it, because it was not very good. So I did. April 21st, 2015 brings us the Taken 3 Blu-ray slash DVD release and just like the other two films there is a unrated cut but it's only on the blu-ray the dvd just has the theatrical cut blu-ray has both cuts the whole unrated cut is just a whole marketing shtick that these movies have there's not much difference between the theatrical and the unrated cuts of any of these i saw the unrated cut of taken three for this review nothing about that cut says it's unrated there's no, like, gratuitous violent violence or, like, a bunch of F-words or anything. It's just a marketing ploy. February 7th, 2017 brings us the Taken 3 Movie Collection Blu-ray set. No d- DVD set, which is unfortunate, but there is a Blu-ray set out there for you. There's a regular slipcase version with a grizzled Liam Neeson there on the front looking just... So very sad, because his family just keeps getting taken. You have to wonder, when is he going to realize he's a terrible father? (laughs) Which is a joke I'm sure everyone has made about these movies, because why the hell are there three Taken films if Brian Mills is such a great dad? Why does his family keep getting kidnapped? I'm sure by the sixth one, it's his, like, great Aunt Mildred that gets kidnapped. (laughs) God, please don't make three more Taken movies. Please don't. Please, please don't do it, Liam Neeson. I'm begging you. There was also a Best Buy exclusive Steelbook variant with some pretty freaking sweet artwork of a silhouette of Liam Neeson on a bright orange background. Maybe I'm biased because this is the version I have, but I really like this Steelbook. Our final release for this history section comes on August 26, 2018 when this Steelbook got reprinted but it was only available at Walmart, not Best Buy. There was a weird period in like 2018 to around maybe 2020 where Walmart was getting the Steelbook rejects, as I called them, uh, to put out on their store shelves. It's like Steelbooks that didn't sell on Best Buy shelves, so I'm sure Walmart grabbed them at wholesale cost and were selling them at a deep discount over on their store shelves. I think I paid like 15 bucks for my steelbook when I found it at Walmart, which was amazing. The ones that I remember seeing were Logan, some of the Transformers films. uh, There was Pulp Fiction, Zombieland. They had all kinds of steelbooks there. Not the case anymore now because at least the Walmarts where I live have downsized their physical media sections entirely and don't have steelbook sections anymore but that was a cool period in time where you could get steelbooks at walmart not just at best buy and i'm still kicking myself for not picking up that logan steelbook because that had some great artwork on it and now it's expensive on the secondary market god when will i learn 
But as I said, that is the last time that all three of these films were in included in the same pack. Taken does not have a 4K. Taken 2 doesn't have a 4K. And Taken 3 doesn't, doesn't have a 4K. And hopefully, just the first one will get the 4K treatment. Or, you know what? Why don't we just stay away from that? Because if the first one gets a 4K, then the other two will have to as well. So why don't we just, why don't we just leave Taken alone? Hmm? It's fine. It has a fine Blu-ray transfer. We'll just leave it there and never touch it again. That wraps things up for your history section. Let's move right along to the close-up. Alrighty, everyone. Here's your close-up look at the Taken Trilogy. I have the Walmart-exclusive Steelbook version of the Taken Trilogy here. Although, I think this was a Best Buy exclusive first, but I found my copy at Walmart, and it's the only place I could find this after it left the Best Buy shelves. So I'm calling it a Walmart exclusive variant here. It's no d d d different than the Best Buy one. Was that needlessly complicated? A little bit. But yeah, we have this really awesome steelbook here with a silhouette of Liam Nason's Brian Mills there on the front. There's his name, and there's Taken, three movie collection. They don't call it the Taken Trilogy, because this this trilogy isn't really a trilogy. It's, I, I mean, yes, it's a trilogy per se, but the movies don't really acknowledge the other one's existences. It's a weird thing. We'll talk about it later on in the review, but it does call it a three movie collection, implying there could be a fourth one on the way, which, God, I hope not. Uh, but that's not dust. That's on there. That's just little detailing done to the T-A and the N there. See if I rub my finger on it. It doesn't come off. I really like this poster. It's really awesome. The orange is really striking. It's what caught my eye uh, in the, the store when I first found it. The Spine, 20th Century Fox, Taken 3 Movie Collection. No product number down there on the bottom. The back is just the flip phone from the first movie that Brian uses to call his daughter and and tell her that she will be taken. And then she's like yanked out from underneath that bed. You all know that scene I'm talking about. And then you got some copyright stuff down there at the bottom. Again, I really like this orange here on the steelbook. It's very striking. It's different from the discs because the discs are just normal. They're just blue. It's normal 20th Century Fox artwork there, meaning there's no artwork. They're just blue, so there's the first taken over there. I'm just going to throw these on the bed here because there is artwork behind these discs. Here's taken two. And the third movie, here's take three in. <laughs> Get it? Because I put the three where the E should be. It's so funny. It's take three in. <laughs> I hate when studios do that. Then on the inside... It's like a weapons rack. It's actually kind of cool, although I don't know why Brian Mills would have this weapons rack. He doesn't ever interact with these in the movies. I guess maybe Taken 3, he has that weird bunker thing that he goes to after he's framed for the murder of his wife, but I don't recall ever seeing a weapons rack of this caliber in these movies. Uh, at least not in the first one where Brian Mills isn't a superhero, but... Again, we'll talk about that later. One thing I will say, though, about how these discs are laid out, there's no double stacking going on here. There's adequate space in between the Taken 2 and the Taken 3 discs to where they won't scratch up against one another. And then the Taken 1 disc is just all by itself. I like this setup for these discs. So that's your close-up. Let's move right along to the menu tours of all three of these movies. All right, folks, here we are for a menu tour, starting with the first Taken film. I should go ahead and note that before this menu even pops up, uh, there is a sub-menu where you choose either the theatrical cut or the unrated cut. So the theatrical and the unrated are both included on this Blu-ray. I don't know if I mentioned that during the history section or not, but they are both included here. I picked the theatrical. I don't think it really matters, but we're going to go ahead and jump into it here. We have scenes from the movie playing in the background. We have play, setup, scenes, and special features with 
who has a cool menu d design down here. It's like CIA files or something. Uh, for setup, we have a English 5.1 mix, Spanish 5.1, and French 5.1, and we have two commentary tracks down here on the bottom. We have commentary by director Pierre Morel, cinematographer Mitchell Abramowitz, and Mitchell Julien. I don't know any of these people. They're all French. Uh, but these commentaries are only on the unrated cut of the film so i guess that so i guess it does affect the bonus content that you can look at if you're looking at the unrated or the theatrical cut but we also have a commentary by writer robert mark Kamen. for subtitles we have english and spanish no french for scenes oh look isn't that convenient end titles right there on the bottom 24 scenes 23 if you don't count the credits there but they all have titles numbers and photos and for special features you can also go to the unrated version from the special features area and then your commentaries are listed again black ops field manual i guess that's like a pop-up thing that pops up while you watch the unrated cut we have the making of avant premiere inside action side by side comparisons and also trailers so a lot of your bonus content you're only going to be able to see if you select the unrated cut Moving along, here's Taken 2's menu. I was smart. I picked the unrated version this time, although with my luck, all the bonus content will be on the theatrical cut. But anyway, you do have a unrated and a theatrical cut here on this Blu-ray. We have play, setup, search, extras, and live extras. Mm, that's going to be fun. This definitely is a Olivier Megaton film because you can see how many freaking cuts there are in just the menu. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the action in this film at all. It's too quick cutty and too choppy for me, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, for setup and for audio options, we have an English 5.1 mix, maybe English descriptive audio, and then, yep, only for the theatrical version, Spanish 5.1, French 5.1, whatever language that is. It's only for the theatrical version, though. For subtitles, we have English, Spanish that language that's it no french for scenes we have numbers and a little photo from the scene there and then also some little squares down here on this timeline letting you know where you are in the movie let's go to the very end of the film 24 scenes 23 if you don't count credits except this one the credits are kind of part of the movie you also have a bookmarks tab there i'm I am literally getting a headache as I'm going through this menu. God, I cannot stand Olivier Megaton. Uh, we have go to the go to the theatrical version, deleted scenes, alternate ending, Black Ops Field Manual, unrated version only, Sam's Tools of the Trade, FX Movie Channel Presents, in character with Liam Neeson, theatrical trailers, sneak peeks, and then again go to the theatrical version. So I guess live extras comes to you from the internet. Because it says I have a network connection problem, which I don't. My Xbox is connected to the internet. I think the service that provided these live extras has been shut down. So about the same amount of bonus content on this second movie as there was on the first. Although that live extras tab, it's pretty cool, I guess. But like I said earlier, I think the service that provided the live extras feed or the server that you would connect to is not operational anymore and that's the problem when it comes with internet d delivered special features once those servers go down you don't have access to them anymore and we're at the final film here taken three already well i was about to say there's less cuts here but n no no there's about the same amount of cuts and i'm again getting a headache looking at this i am so sorry for these menus guys olivier megaton is probably one of the worst directors working today at least when it comes to filming action. He does not know what he's doing. Interesting, though, there's no sub-menu asking if you wanted to go to the theatrical or the unrated version. Uh, I wonder if I hit play. Okay, yeah. Theatrical version and unrated version. Okay, so there we go. You can select them there. For setup, we have English 5.1, English descriptive, audio, theatrical version only, Spanish 5.1, French 5.1, and for subtitles, we have English, Spanish, 
And that's it. I wonder why there's no French subtitles. For search and for scenes, we have the return of the bar and the numbers and screenshots from the film. See, this is the runtime of the theatrical cut because the unrated cut runs like five minutes longer. I watched the unrated for this review. It's not better than the, than the theatrical. As a matter of fact, spoiler alert for later, Taken 3 is one of the worst films I've ever seen in my career of watching movies. And I watched the unrated cut and not much is different. Uh, it runs about an hour 55. This theatrical cut runs about an hour 48 minutes, but 31 scenes, 32 if you count credits. They also have that bookmarks tab that I still don't know how that works. For extras, we have deleted scene. We have A, deleted scene. Sam's Bunker, aka The Rabbit Hole. A Taken to LA, A Taken Legacy. Film Gallery, Theatrical Trailer, and a Sneak Peek. So I'm going to go ahead and take us back to the final wrap-up here before any of us vomit from all of this unnecessary quick cutting going on here. Let's go ahead and head on back and answer the five main questions as always, because that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up your menu tour. All right, so we're back from the close-up. Now it's time to answer the five main questions as always. Number one, where can you pick this product up? Used DVD or Blu-ray stores, I always see copies of Taken and Taken 2 at those places. Hardly ever see Taken 3, so I don't think that sold very well when it first hit home video. Uh, but you can find a lot of copies of the first Taken on both Blu-ray and DVD at your local game exchange or your local half-price books. But you won't find it in the big box retail stores. Number two, is this product still being printed nowadays? Now, this one is a pretty definitive no. Number three, should you pick this product up? So I'm going to go through each of these movies one by one, starting with the best one, which is the first Taken film. This film is really fun, and it's kind of surprising, considering that the reason that the movie exists is because a girl gets kidnapped and gets sold into a sex trafficking ring. Am I allowed to say that here on YouTube? I don't know. When I first saw this first Taken film, I I liked it fine, but watching it now, I really enjoyed it. It's got a great performance from Liam Neeson. You really believe that he's all about his family and he wants to make up for the time that he lost because he's an ex-CIA operative, and you really believe he's capable of doing what he says he can do. I buy him as a sweet and l loving father, but I also buy him as a technical badass who will do anything in his power to save his daughter. And Neeson carries this movie on his shoulders with grace and elevates the performers around him because God knows nobody else in this movie gives as good of a performance as Neeson does. I mean, Maggie Grace is good as his daughter. She is sufficient in her role. She's not in the movie a whole lot. I don't buy that she's a teenager, though. There is no way she was, you know, 15 or 16 when she filmed this. That is a whole 25-year-old right there. <laughs> it's like when you go back and watch those old Nickelodeon sitcoms like iCarly or Drake and Josh or Victorious. There is no way those people are in high school. Those are whole-ass adults. The scene that really stood out to me in this first Taken film is where Maggie Grace's daughter character... I guess I could call her Kim, that's her name. When she gets kidnapped, it is legitimately terrifying. Like, I was tense throughout it. The, the camera work, the sound uh, effects, the fact that she's on the phone with Nason th th through the entire exchange, it's a legitimately terrifying scene. But going back to Liam Nason's Brian Mills, he feels like a real guy with real connections and real friends who actually know how to do this like super secret government security stuff i like his group of friends sam is definitely my favorite and uh the dream for me at least is to be on that golf course with sam and those guys just living it up every tuesday just retirement going out and having a good golf game that is the ultimate dream at least for me of course, that won't come for another, you know, 50 years at this rate with the president we have in office now and the fact that my <laughs> retirement fund is in the toilet right now. Thanks, Biden. The action throughout Taken is sufficient. There's not a whole lot of it, but when there is, 
it's not the worst thing in the world. There are a few moments of quick cutting where I would have preferred a long shot, maybe, just to see how the stunt work would be conveyed on screen and how good that could have looked. But for the most part, the action is pretty good. Most of the intrigue from the uh, film, though, is based solely on the performance of Liam Neeson and how he tracks down where his daughter is being held at. And hey, if you guys are fans of the, of the TV show Arrow, an actress who was on that show is in this movie. Katie Cassidy, who was Laurel Lance on Arrow, is, uh, what's her name? Amanda, I think? She gets killed like halfway through, so it's kind of a blink and you miss it cameo. Uh, but she's here. I don't know if... I think I remember she got married recently, so Katie Cassidy might not be her last name anymore. Uh, but she's in the movie, so I was like, hey, it's Laurel! And she's dead. Oh, that stinks. Just like how she went out in the TV show Arrow. They just killed her, and apparently she has like a doppelganger on another Earth or something. I don't know, that was dumb. Just a rant on the TV show Arrow for just a minute. Felicity and Oliver should not have wound up together, okay? I was a big Felicity Oliver supporter back when the show was first airing, but since rewatching it, you should have went with Laurel, Oliver. You should have went with Laurel. She was she was the obvious and most logical choice. I'm sorry, but you chose wrong. <laughs> the one problem I see with Taken, other than it's like 90 minutes and the pacing is really breakneck, and there could be some moments where it could slow down more to let the characters and the audience breathe, is the lack of a main villain. The main antagonist per se is the circumstance now you could argue that makes taken more interesting since there's not a main bad guy to root against it's brian versus the clock but i don't know i found myself wondering who am i supposed to hate here i mean there there are a lot of different villains in the film but they don't get built up at all they show up they give their exposition and then brian kills them there's not really a lot of room for me to root for a villain to not live throughout the film, basically. It's it's weird how I'm phrasing this, I know. There are some pretty evil bastards that are in this film. I mean, you want to sell innocent girls into sex slavery. Yeah, that's not, that's not okay, and you probably should die for that. But if there's not one big head honcho at the top of everything, which there kind of is, but he also doesn't make it out of the film alive. He's barely built up at all. If there's not a main head honcho that I'm rooting against, it's kind of difficult for me to get into the story. At least on rewatches. Like, I hadn't seen Taken in years. So, me watching it for this, it was like seeing it for the first time. But if I watched it, I don't know, a few weeks from now, I probably won't be as interested in it because I know what happens. I know how the story plays out. Overall, though, I like Taken. I think it's a really fun and thrilling adventure story and it proved to everyone that Liam Neeson can be an action star and that he's a really good actor although I think Schindler's List already proved that but I really like him in Taken so if you haven't seen Taken you definitely should give it a watch despite the fact I spoiled that Laurel Lance dies but she's like a really minor character okay I didn't spoil anything else okay calm down but you should watch Taken because it's really fun and uh, spoiler alert for the rest of this video, that's the only film in this franchise you should see because, oh boy, there is a deep drop in quality as we move on here. Taken 2 is not a good sequel. Taken 2 is very derivative. It follows pretty much the same plot as the first movie, but that doesn't mean there aren't some good things in it. I like seeing where Brian and his surrogate family, that being his ex-wife, played by Famke Jensen, and his daughter, Kim, played by Maggie Grace, I like seeing where they wound up after the first Taken film, and I like that they acknowledge the first Taken film happened. That's some of the problems I have with some sequels. They don't acknowledge that the first film actually happened. It's like, oh, this, this could be just a totally different story. This could literally be just a totally different film and have zero connection to its first film that started everything here. They actually acknowledge, yeah, Kim, what was it like being in a sex trafficking ring? I like the globe trotting. That was kind of fun to get to see Budapest, I think's where they were. That was that was fun. 
I think they actually shot there, so that was cool to see. I like that there's a main antagonist that I can root against, but I don't like him at all. Boy, I think we we just blew past all the things I liked, and now we're into the things I didn't like. Okay, so the main antagonist is the father of one of the guys who died in the first Taken film. Now, I get it, okay? If your kid gets killed under any circumstance, you're going to be devastated. I don't have a kid myself, not a human kid at least I hope to be a father one day, but if my child ever dies, God forbid, or even gets hurt under any circumstance, I don't, I will be devastated. But I also have to think, what got my kid into that scenario? In the case of this guy, his, his son was selling innocent women into sex slavery. That's not okay. And you shouldn't go after the guy who killed him for it. I don't know, maybe it's just the rational side of my brain coming in here, but... That guy really needed to just sit back and think for a minute like, hmm, you know, I think my son was a pretty bad guy. Maybe I shouldn't be sad that he's gone. I mean, I'm sad that he's gone, of course, because, you know, that's my son. That's my own flesh and blood, and I'm always going to love him. But, like, maybe it wasn't such a bad thing that he got taken out because he was, like, a bad guy. Somebody's going to come after me in the comments for that accent. I don't know what that was either. And this guy legitimately says to Brian that he doesn't care what his son did in the past. That's his son. I get it. But at the same time, if this was real life and not a movie, and we didn't, and we didn't need a movie to happen, I think he would have thought about that just a little bit more carefully before going after Brian's family. The roles are switched here. It's Brian and his ex-wife that are taken <laughs> in this movie, and Maggie Grace is by herself throughout most of it. I have to say, when Famke... Jensen and Liam Nason are tied up and have the hoods over their heads in the back of that van. How the hell does Liam Neeson remember every little piece of information that he's able to gather while he's on underneath that hood? He's like counting the seconds it takes to come to a turn and he remembers the right turn and he remembers he was by a dockside. I, how does he remember that? I can't even remember what I had for breakfast this morning. Gluten-free waffles, sir. Yeah, that's right. Much less remember how many seconds it took from the moment I was kidnapped to make a right turn. I mentioned earlier how in the first Taken film, it felt like Brian Mills was a real guy. That's out the window. Brian Mills is a freaking superhero in Taken 2. He hides a little, like, almost Apple Watch-looking device in his sleeve, and it's supposedly a phone... And he's able to just call from that thing? No one no one can notice that it's in his sleeve? Or I think it was actually in his, like, pant leg or something? No one can notice he's hiding it? And the things he does in this film to get free and to figure out what's going on with this plot? It just... Oh, boy. It was headache-inducing. Or maybe that comes from the horrible action in this film. The action sequences are chopped to shit throughout the entirety of Taken 2. And that's because we have Olivier Megaton behind the camera here, directing Taken 2. This guy doesn't know how to film action. All this guy knows how to do is quick cut, and it's annoying as shit. Let me see the action. Let me see what is going on. Let me see how Liam Neeson gets from point A to point B, because as it stands with Taken 2, how many freaking quick cuts are here? I don't, I don't know what the hell's happening during most, most of these action sequences. Because of how many quick cuts there are, I check out during the majority of them. And then I check back in when the dialogue scenes start up again. Because I don't give a shit about what happens during these action scenes, because I can't see what's going on. I'll give Taken 2 credit. It's better than I remembered it. When I first saw Taken 2, I thought it was the worst film in this franchise. And watching it now... No, it's not the worst. There's actually some things I like about it. Like I said, the family dynamic. I like those scenes where those, where that cast is together. I even like when they bring in Kim's boyfriend and Liam Neeson has to play a little threatening dad. I like that stuff. Give me more of that. But as it stands, Taken 2 is a not good movie. I wouldn't say it's a horrible movie, but it's not very good. It's not a worthy follow-up to the first film. It didn't need to exist. And no, you shouldn't see it. It's 
the action alone should make you stay away from it because wow, this is some of the worst action I have ever seen put to screen. Now we come to the actual worst film in the Taken trilogy, Taken 3. This film is just a watered down version of The Fugitive and I hate it. It's the longest of the Taken movies, reaching almost two hours, and by God, you can feel every minute of that uh, of that runtime. Liam Neeson is back, again, as Brian Mills, and this time, nobody gets taken. Nobody. Famke Jensen gets murdered, and uh, Brian is uh, framed for it, but we all know he didn't do it, so he has to go on the run and becomes a superhero again, because apparently he has... Safe houses stashed all over the city where he lives in, and he can just go there, and all of his friends know that he's innocent? It just... <laughs> it's so hard for me to even talk about this movie, because it's so bad. There's a needless pregnancy plot thrown in here. Kim is pregnant for some reason. They recast Jamie, I don't know why, the boyfriend. He's a different actor now. And they recast the husband of Humka Jensen from the first film. Stuart and the first film was really old. Like 60s, at least. They recast Stuart with Do Gray Scott here in the third film, which, if you don't know Do Gray Scott, he was supposed to be Wolverine um, prior to him filming Mission Impossible 2, and he had to drop out of that role, which is why we now have Hugh Jackman, and Do Gray Scott went on to do nothing because he was bad in Mission Impossible, and he's bad here. Do Gray Scott looks like 20 years younger than the first guy who played Stuart, which doesn't make any sense to me. Why would you... He's obviously the villain! You cast Do Gray Scott. This guy just looks like the bad guy. Like, you don't even try to hide it. He's obviously the villain. There's some stupid plot about Russians and how Do Gray Scott owes them money, and the Russians are going to kill his wife, but he and his wife are going through a divorce, and he wants... The life insurance policy or something. It's so convoluted. I can't even recite it here for you because it's so stupid. And then Forrest Whitaker here gives probably his worst performance of his entire career. He looks like he didn't even want to be here. I don't know anything about his character. I don't care to know anything about his character. I just know that he didn't want to be here. The rest of the cast didn't want to be here. I don't want to be here talking about it because this movie is awful. I don't know how many times I can say that. By God. The absolute worst instance of quick cutting I have ever seen is in Taken 3. I'm shaking right now because it's so maddening talking about this because there is a shot in this film of Liam Neeson jumping over a fence and I counted 10 cuts as he jumps over the fence. Would one not suffice? Maybe two? You need 10 different angles of Liam Neeson hopping over a fence. Are you kidding me? This one took the most out of me to watch because I just, I hated every minute of it and I watched it over two days. I had to turn it off halfway through. I could not get through it because this is just, this is the pits of Liam Neeson's filmography. I know why he did it. They probably paid him a buttload of money for it, but holy shit, Taken 3. Do not ever watch this piece of shit. Do not ever. I don't think I've ever gotten this angry over a film in a long time. Do not ever watch Taken 3. It is the pits in terms of action, suspense, competent filmmaking. It's horrible. So as far as the Taken films go, I recommended the first one. The other two, don't ever watch. So as a whole, I can't recommend the Taken trilogy, but I can kind of recommend it because that steelbook I have is really nice. But if you're only going to see one and you're only going to pick up one, just watch the first one. Pick up the Blu-ray. It's really cheap. Buy it. Just watch the first one. It's a beautifully self-contained story. It didn't need sequels. By God, don't even consider watching Taken 3. Let that movie just fall off the pit into obscurity. And maybe if you have a rainy day and Taken 2 is on HBO or something, maybe watch it then. But don't, don't seek it out. Don't seek any of the sequels out. Watch... Watch the first one, because the first one's good. Number four, where should you pick this product up? Same answers as number one. And number five, what price should you pay? I'm only going to give you prices for the first film, because uh, it's extraordinarily cheap. That first film sold like hotcakes. So for the Blu-ray, I'd say like five bucks for that. The DVD is probably a little bit cheaper, maybe around three. See, I'm even recommending you get a DVD over watching Taken 2 or 3. 
You know I don't like these movies when I recommend you watch a DVD over the sequels. But I don't know if you find that steelbook for a good price, I guess, and you don't care about owning two really bad movies in your collection. I mean, I'm no saint. I've got bad movies in my collection. I own Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, okay? I'm no stranger to bad films, but I I really like that steelbook. <laughs> I can't get over how, how cool the orange color is and the silhouette of Liam Neeson that's on it. That's a really cool steelbook so if you find that i don't know 10 15 bucks for that maybe well folks i didn't expect to get that upset but that's the end of the taken trilogy hmr i know overall the trilogy gets a red arrow but i i really would like to sing the praises at that first movie a lot because that first movie for being such a small production is really good i enjoy it a lot watch that first movie i can't emphasize that enough don't believe what people say about the Taken franchise, because if they say, oh no, the Taken franchise is bad, they're probably talking about two and three, because yeah, they are bad. But the first one is not. The Taken franchise should have never been a franchise. In a perfect world, Taken is just its own little movie, and a few years later, Liam Neeson went on to do like Nonstop or, or something, which Nonstop, that's a fun thriller too that he stars in. So, where do we go from here? Well, next week, I thought we'd stick to smaller productions. We'd stick to smaller cult classic style films, not some big budget Hollywood action film. But don't worry, we'll get back to those in the next couple of weeks. But for now, I want to talk about a little film that spawned a crap ton of sequels to it. The first film, though, is legitimately really good, and it's the only one of the sequels I've seen. So it's really the only one I can say that I know is good. I've heard the sequels aren't too great, though. This is a franchise that has basically wound up in the Walmart bargain bin, especially with like the 5th, 6th, and 7th installments. I don't know if there's an 8th installment to this franchise, but next week we're talking the cult classic 90s film Tremors. It's a movie about a group of American hillbillies that live out in the desert, very small town, and they are met with an onslaught from giant sandworms. Boy, doesn't that sound like a good time. It definitely appeals to the country side of me because of all the country accents in it, and Kevin Bacon's got a pretty sexy cowboy hat on there. Will I be using this over-the-top country accent come next week when we talk about trimmers? Boy, I don't know. But y'all come back next week, and you find out. Also find out what I think of the movie Trimmers. Spoiler alert, I think it's pretty good. Thank you all so very much for watching. I apologize to all of the, like, two fans of Taken 3 out there. Actually, no, I don't apologize to you because you like bad things and your opinion is invalidated because you like Taken 3. I'll see you all next week for Tremors. Thank you all so very much for watching. Good night, everybody.